Oh my God, you guys, I missed you so much. I am so happy to be back. I've got lots of content to share with you. So let's get started. Welcome to Season 4, Episode 1 of the Crochet Luna Blogcast. My name is Claudia, and I'm coming to you from the San Diego area in Southern California, where it's been a minute since I last uploaded a video, and I am so, so happy to be back. I want to welcome, first of all, all my returning viewers and any new viewers to the Blogcast. Thank you so much for stopping by. I have prepared a nice, long video and uh, I'm excited to share some of the content that I've been working on these past couple of months with you. Yeah, it's been since June since I was on these YouTube streets. I'm back uh, for a new uh, start of the crafting season. One of the things that I have changed is I am not numerically numbering my episodes. Um, I feel September is definitely the start of the crafting season. So going forward, I would like to say that the year here at the Crochet Luna Blogcast starts September 1st and ends on June 30th. So this is my fourth September here on YouTube, and I am really excited about what's to come. There are some new changes to the Blogcast. I want to say that uh, moving forward, I will be recording a monthly Blogcast episode towards the middle of the month it will be released so i uh want to really commit to getting at least one monthly episode up for you guys if there are any any other additional episodes of course i will be happy to share here on youtube but i definitely want to commit to having one monthly episode uploaded to youtube towards the middle of the month so that is something that going forward i um i will be working towards so what have I been up to? What have I been up to since June? This summer, as you know, uh, living through a pandemic is a chaotic thing, right? We are living in chaotic times, as I like to say. I, I want to report that my immediate family and I, we have been okay. Um, we have been touched by COVID in the larger expanded family. We had a family member pass away. Um, from COVID, and we have had several members who have uh, gotten sick but have recovered, luck, thank God, luckily, um, from COVID. So really, um, I really don't know a lot of people who have not had some uh, real firsthand experiences dealing with the pandemic. It is a real thing. Um, as you all know, I suffer from an autoimmune disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and so for me, Sheltering in and keeping social distance and wearing a mask is an absolute must. I don't leave my house unless I absolutely have to. And if I do, I always have a mask. I think, I, I mean, everywhere, in every corner, there's a mask available for people to wear, uh, for me to wear, for my family members to wear. Um, yeah, masks are a big deal. And I had this grand plan that I was going to sew masks myself. And my dog chewed the electric pedal wire things to my sewing machine. So as of right now, I have to get that service and I have to get a new pedal for the sewing machine. But I've been buying masks everywhere, which has been a lot of fun because I really believe people have done a way better job than I would have uh, making masks. So yeah, I've supported a lot of mask makers and I'm really happy to have done that. I've also been working, um, some of you may have know, may know that I took a position as operation manager for Lady Dye Yarns. That's Diane Ivy. Um, she is Lady Dye Yarns on Instagram and on all social media platforms. And last September, actually, I took a position as her operations manager. All, what that means, all that really means is that I'm in charge of shipping all of the clubs and kits that we put together for Lady Dye Yarns. Um, we are very much focused on creating fun themes and kits that include yarn, project back patterns, stitch markers, all kinds of things, notions. And they have been 
really, really popular, which means I have been really, really busy. And it was one of the reasons why I really took a step back from um, recording videos. I have worked really hard this summer. Diane has worked really hard this summer um, to ensure that the business moves forward and thrives. If you don't know about, about Diane, I would highly encourage you to follow her on Instagram. Her platform is Craftivism, and she is someone who uh, believes with all her heart and soul um, that we need to register to vote, that our vote matters. She talks about that a lot in her social media platforms. She even has a whole website that will be launching um, called Rebel with a Cause 2020, where you can get a lot of information about voting and um, things like that uh, from her. And so a lot of our kits um, will have like a donation component to a charity. And one of our most popular kits is the Schitt's Creek kit. If you guys have not watched the show, Schitt's Creek, I highly recommend it. It is a fantastic show. We did a Schitt's Creek uh, themed kit that was amazing and um, people absolutely loved it. So that's one of the things that I have uh, been doing. And as a full-time employee now, I have taken a step back from certain things because I have been um, focused on working with Diane, but it's been amazing. She is an amazing creative being and it's been a thrill and it's, it's just a great time um, to be working during these times to have the focus and the motivation and to work with people who are creative because I work with a lot of makers. Um, we tend to bring in BIPOC makers into our clubs. And so I've had the pleasure and the honor to work some, with some of the most amazing makers in the fiber community. So that's one of the things that I, I have been doing this past summer. And then there's another big thing that I'll talk about towards the end that I've been working on this past summer that's exciting. So let's talk cows and mouths. I have been participating in a year-long uh, make-along with my dear friend Hannah of the Cozy Cottage Crochet. We are hosting the Wizarding Mal. It is a year-long Mal which, with prompts for every month for you to make a sock, knit or crochet, or a project bag. Now, I have an issue, and that is no one wants my prizes. For quarter one and quarter two, I have picked uh, winners twice and nobody has contact me, contacted me to claim their prize. And they're really good prizes. They really are. They have yarn and project bags and all kinds of stuff. So I think what I'm going to do, and you know, quarter three is coming up at the end of September, is if you have participated in the Wizarding Mal on Ravelry in my Ravelry group, uh, the Crochet Luna Ravelry group. If you participated in that group from January up until the end of June, please send me an email, and I'll put my email address right here, and it's actually on the on the show notes at the bottom. My email address is crochetluna.claudia at gmail.com. If you participated from January to the end of June, and you send me an email and you say, Claudia, I would like to be part of a drawing for one of the prizes. I will enter you into a little raffle, and at least I know that you have watched this episode and that you have indeed interest in winning one of my prizes. So contact me only if you have participated in the Ravelry thread on the Crochet Luna podcast from January to the end of June. You don't have to have finished anything as long as you participated in the thread. Shoot me an email and I will enter you in a, a raffle a, so that you can have the opportunity to win a prize. And I know that you actually want to win a prize because I am a little frustrated that I have picked winners um, twice 
so four winners and nobody has claimed their prize. In my last video, I shared about a mail that I wanted to host um, that was going to be called the Soap Sack Mail. I still want to move forward with it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up from now till the end of the year. And basically all we're doing is we are knitting or crocheting soap sacks for the organization sack. And I talked about this in my previous video, so if you'd like to get more in-depth information, you can check that out. But this is the this is the organization, and what they do is they collect soap sacks where they can put a bar of soap and distribute them at uh, food pantries and other charitable organizations. And what I liked about this project is that it was quick. I'll be working through some of my cotton stash to make this super quick little soap sacks the patterns are free on the sack website and i will list those below so if you want to uh, crochet or knit a soap sack mail it to me i will gather them all up at the end of the year and send them over to stacy at the sack organization i will um put more information about that below and i just feel like it's a it's a quick little mail it's fun and you will be using some of your cotton stash if you're like me and have a ton of it. You can um, use some of it to create these cute little simple soap sacks. I want to let you know about two make-alongs that are happening or will start soon. The first one is the BIPOC Mal that is um, hosted by Elizabeth Desamore of Desamore Designs. I will um, put her Instagram right here so that you can go check it out. That starts October 1st. It has prizes, really incredible patterns, and she has certain parameters that she would like for you to follow in order to participate, but I think they're great because they are boosting the visibility of BIPOC makers in our community. The next mail I wanted to let you know is hosted by my dear friend Clarissa Beth of Crochet Cakes, and she is working really, really hard to get her blog, her videos, her patterns out into the world and to be seen. So I really I highly encourage you to subscribe to her channel, read her blog, sign up for her for her blog. It's filled with really, really great free patterns that she works really hard to put out. Um, but she's hosting the Latin Latin X Mal. It's called the I'll put the hashtag right here, the Latin X Maker Mal 2020. I know that as long as you use a fiber yarn pattern from a um, Latinx maker, you are welcome to participate in this mail. It's going to run uh, September 15th through October 15th, which is the same date as Hispanic Heritage Month. So I highly encourage you to check out some Latinx makers and um, support our community. I haven't forgotten the Summer of Romance Mal. This is a Mal that I co-host every year with my friend Clarissa Beth of Crochet Cakes. And I know that she has already picked a winner. I have not picked a winner yet, but I will tell you that the winner that I pick will be getting a one-year digital subscription to Inside Crochet. I just have to contact them and figure out how I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to pick a winner. And in the next episode, I'll let you know who that is. I feel like a digital subscription to Inside Crochet is an amazing prize because I love them and it's one of my favorite crochet magazines. So I will take the time to pick the winner and next episode, I'll let you know who that is. And by then I will have figured all the ins and outs on how to gift you that, that membership or that subscription. So that is uh, the Summer of Romance uh, Cal, and the theme was Timeless Romances. My next segment is about my whips, my FOs, and my Project Q. I actually did not crochet a lot this summer. I'll tell you, at the beginning of COVID and the shutting down of everything and sheltering in place, I uh, went a little bonkers and decided I was going to start a thousand patterns and I could not focus. It was like impossible to focus. And I stopped one day, frogged almost everything and decided to 
just find a couple of things that I thought I could focus on and worked on them. And one of them um, came through as a gift. And uh, the lovely Cecilia Lozada, who is Mama DIY, um, published an ebook called Ethical Collection. And it is a collection of patterns that she created with a particular yarn. And this is a paid ebook that you can find on Ravelry, but you can also purchase the patterns individually. And the first thing that caught my eye was this top. And I thought that would be a great top to use for my project for the summer of romance uh, make along. And so I decided that's what I was gonna make. And I contacted Jesse of Formida Yarns to dye me a, two special colorways because my couple that I chose was Clarence and Alabama from True Romance. And so she died. I will put the, the picture that inspired her right here. And then you can see how she came about um, dyeing this yarn for me. So this one right here is called Alabama. I love the speckling. I love the way Jessie dyes. She is an amazing dyer. And I started with the yoke. which looks like that. I love the way the colors are looking on this yoke. I, um, oh, look at that. I don't have, I don't have anything keeping this from unraveling. That's not good. Anyway, I have one more increased round to go and then I will start on the body of, of the shirt. This is going to be my top. And then she dyed this amazing colorway. And this is called Clarence. And in the poster for the movie, you can see that he wears like a Hawaiian shirt. that has all of these colors in it. And I, I love how she did that. So this is Clarence and this is Alabama. Now I don't have plans for Clarence yet, but I have been eyeing a shawl. I'm not sure. I'm going to finish the top first and then I will, um, I will see what pattern, uh, will pair well with Clarence. So believe it or not, I only have three whips my uh it's a beautiful day t-shirt and two pairs of socks i have actually frogged everything else that was sitting in a project bag um that i knew i was not going to get back to i just if i haven't crocheted on it since whenever i mean i have i have a top that i started two years ago that's not going to get done so i just frogged everything and i am now starting with my it's a beautiful day top and two pairs of socks to finish shortly because i don't want to go into this new crafting season with a bunch of whips i just can't i can't do it i've realized that i'm better at finishing things when i just focus one project at a time um i started way too many things like i said i went through this period where i was just starting buying patterns and and a lack of focus that was really frustrating for me. So I decided that uh, clearing the whip pile and just focusing on one thing at a time is the way I want to move forward. And hopefully that means that I, I will finish more things. So yeah, that that's where I'm at. I mean, different times in crafting, in your crafting life, you go through different phases. Um, at one point I had 13 whips uh, that only needed the ends uh, woven in and a couple stitches here and there, and I finished that and it felt really good. And then I ended up 
with another pile of whips and I just I don't I don't want to do that let's talk about my two FOs I have one shawl and one top and the shawl is by Cecilia Lozada and this is a shawl that actually helped me to focus on my crochet after I spent time fragging a bunch of projects that were not working out I found this pattern and I just decided I was going to start it and I was going to finish it and it really really helped me to refocus my crafting and it's called the Calandula Shawl it's by Cecilia Lozada this is a paint pattern and I believe Calandula means marigold in Spanish I, I will tell you, I will be completely honest with you, I followed it via the, the diagrams, the schematics that she put on there because they're excellent. I, I prefer to work off of a graph, to be honest with you, than written words. And so whenever I see a pattern with a good schematic, I just go with that. So I um, will show you a picture of it. It's a really beautiful shawl. Now, the yarn that she used is, um, even though she says it's sport weight, I think it's a little bit thinner than mine because my shawl is not as big as hers, but I also have to let you know that I have not blocked my shawl yet. So this is my marigold shawl. And it has bobbles and a little bit of a textured in between. These are textured. I really, really enjoyed working on this border. So even though it is, it's a it's a long shawl. It is long. I don't know that it's as long as hers. I'm really happy with it. This is 100% acrylic yarn. Um, it is Knit Picks and a Lion brand that I think is out of, I don't, I don't think they make it anymore because I purchased it from a, a thrift store a long time ago, several years ago. So this this green and this color are just Knit Picks um, Sport, Brava Sport I think is what it is. But yeah, I, I went with a really muted palette. And like I said, I love, love, love this gray. 100% acrylic. It's beautiful. I love it. And it feels like it's going to be really warm. And I'm looking forward to it. I really like crescent shawls. I've, I find myself really drawn to crescent shapes more than triangular ones right now. And so when I saw this, I thought, yeah, I got to make that. The next uh, FO that I have is a another thing where I was like, I need, I need something to work on that will help me focus, and I need to start it and I need to finish it. And I was talking to my friend Zelda a long time ago, and I remember her telling me about a pattern that uh, Miss Seta of uh, Seta's Place had created and my friend Debbie in Canada who is the Canadian quad cheddar she made a couple of these and I thought they were really cute and so I went ahead and um, I was gifted this pattern I'll let you know right now and the way to get on it it the way to get this pattern is you have to contact uh, Seta and do the transaction via PayPal I believe I'm I'm pretty sure about that so this is the top it's called Seta's summer top and it just so happened that i had exactly the same yarn that she used in the top except mine was a uh karen cotton cake in this really pretty color and actually my top took one of these but I made a change and I'll tell you what I did. So this is my top. The pattern is more like a recipe, which I think is great. 
because you're able to adjust it based on your bust size or what you want, how you want it to hang. So the, the stitches she's, uh, are great, are simple. She has a video support on YouTube for this pattern, which is great. Um, and you can see there's just a variety of stitches that make this into a really interesting top. I still haven't done a photo shoot for it, so I will be doing that this coming week, but I just wanted to share with you that I, I did finish this beautiful top. And so for this air, this mesh area right here, I did it per the pattern the first time and then I put it on and I didn't like the way it looked. And what I did is I went down, I want to say two hook sizes, two and a half hook sizes. And what that did is if you look at the picture here, the bottom is a little bit more flowy and I tapered mine in. So by going down a couple hook sizes, it tapered the mesh in and it, I feel like it looks a lot better. Sometimes when I wear things that are way too uh, straight and, and big, I just look bigger. So I played around with that. I actually, I cut, I don't, I'm never afraid to cut crochet. I have another project that I'm going to do a video on where I'm cutting it in half. But I cut all of this mesh part out, out and I reattached new yarn to create the mesh. And so that's why I ended up using part of this skein of yarn. Um, but yeah, this is my other finished object. And it's uh, Seta's Summer Top. Seta's Summer Top by Cassetta Laws, or as Zelda likes to call her, Miss Seta Lou. Um, she has a podcast here on Instagram, I mean, on YouTube, and She's just the loveliest, loveliest. Let me share with you my project queue. You know that I've got three whips, two socks, and the t-shirt. And as soon as the shirt is done, I will, I will start working on another shirt. And I've got two shirts that I'm really excited about. <laughs> and I can't wait to start them. And they are both patterns by Sandra Gutierrez. And she is Nomad Stitches. If you don't know Sandra's work, you need to go check it out. She is amazing and I am a huge admirer, admirer of her work. She actually taught a class at Vogue Knitting Live this past month and I think she will be teaching another class next month which I'm hoping to be able to take. But um, let me share these patterns with you. So the first one is called a Zig Zag Zummer Crochet Top. And this is a beginner pattern you can see here not complicated. It is a paid pattern. Um, I don't remember how much this is, but well worth it. She does a great pattern. She writes them very well. And this is yarn that I've had in my stash for a long time. It is, uh, I believe, a linen cotton uh, blend. Let me see. No, I am completely wrong. It is a superwash merino, 60%, and 40% bamboo. I bought this yarn uh, from a yarn dyer who went out of business probably two years ago. So, oh, the camera's going to blow it out. This is more of what it looks like. So that's what I'm going to be making my top. I started it, and then I frogged it. And then I wanted to share my hook with you guys that I'll be using to make it, which is one of my favorite hooks. This is my um, dragonfly three millimeter hook that I had to order because nobody makes three millimeter hooks. Um, you can't go buy a three millimeter hook in the States. You guys know my long, <laughs> my long history with the three millimeter hook. So yes, that is a Zig Zag Zummer Top by Sandra Gutierrez. So I will be working on that and it's living in my not so dodgy project bag that was gifted to me by Ali of the Little Drops of Wonderful um, podcast. And if you don't know Ali, you should definitely check her out. She's running this amazing mail called Strictly Sock 
along and you basically crochet knit socks while watching strictly dancing which is like their version of dancing with the stars and it is a fun fun mail that everybody looks forward to every year so yeah she made this for me and this is actually one of my pins oh and there's Frida she sent me this pin and then I put this one. The next pattern in my project queue is another Sandra Gutierrez top. And it's called Malecon. And it is this amazing top. Can you see all of the beautiful detail in that top? It is a paid pattern. And I... I can't wait to get started on this. It's got lots of, like, it's got a lot of, not video, um, photo tutorials. She writes an amazing pattern. And what I like about this pattern, you can see up here too, is that I think this pattern is really going to push some new skills to the next level. Um, I have not done this this sort of like tapestry crochet that she does and so I'm excited to try that I tried doing taroko it's another one of her uh, popular patterns but I just couldn't do that center that center single crochet stitch that's used in that pattern my hands were not liking it I mean I'm not saying I'll never do it but for right now my hands are not in the shape to do that I have this yarn from stash uh, some of it, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know who the dyer is, but I will show you what I'm going to be using. This is like really beautiful, um, like a peachy color with these like spots on it. Really pretty. And then I'll be using a yellow and a purple. So it's going to look something like that now these these two let me see okay this one here I believe is neighborhood fiber co in the color Basquiat and I bought this one at stitches West this one here I believe is um laser sheep yarn I think I could be totally wrong though. I just, I don't have, I've lost the ball bands. I know for sure this is Neighborhood Fiber Co. in Basquiat. I'm not sure who this is and I'm not sure who this is. But I just, I'm, I'm trying to work through stash guys. And so I'm going to be pulling out a lot of yarns and telling you, I don't know who this is. But let me share one of my favorite, favorite purchases I made this summer. I saw this bag on Instagram and immediately rushed to buy it because it's magical. It just it's just magical. And it's by um Row Home Row Fiber Company. Look at this bag. Oh, is that not beautiful? I love love this bag. And then I bought this pin that's like a constellation, but it's like a, it's a sheep. It's sheep, but they look like constellations. I just love that pen so much. But look at the detail. Do you see the moons in the fabric? And then the crochet hooks. And then on her arms are more of those constellation sheeps right there. And this is the inside of it. With my my yarn oh my god I love this bag I love it and I, I believe it comes in different colors and there's a knitting version and the crochet version and um, she's very whimsical and like her her aesthetic and her graphics um, are just really really unique again it's a uh, home row fiber company that's the, that's who makes the bag And last, I have a project, it's not even wound up, um, that 
in was inspired because I'm doing different uh, Instagram posts during a Latina Latinx Heritage Month, month and uh, they all relate to my country of origin. I was born in El Salvador, and I have been doing a lot of research about El Salvador, trying to connect to my roots. One of the things about El Salvador, it has over 20 volcanoes, three to five that are active. I say three to five because web, there's just, I went through so many websites that said, oh, two are active or three are active. So there's a range between three and five that are active, but over 20 volcanoes in a tiny, tiny, tiny little country. So I found this pattern called Lost Lake by Noriko Ho. And it's this gorgeous shawl. This is a paid pattern. And look at the edging. I love the edging of that. And I love the horse in the background. So I got this pattern. And I found two skins of yarn that really spoke to me. This was called Atlantic Puffin by... The company is Round Mountain Fibers. I believe I've shown this one before. So I felt like this kind of looked like a volcano that was like erupting and the skies that turn from like blue to dark when, the, when you know, the ash covers them. And then this is a skein of Lady Di Yarn's uh, single ply fingering weight in the color Chadwick. And so I felt like these two would work really well together. So this is my third project in my project queue. And it's living. I may have bought, I may have bought a lot of project bags this past summer. I may. I mean, word on the street is I dropped some coin on some bags. But when I show you this other bag, um, it's amazing. So this bag is by Amy Beth of The Fat Squirrel Speaks, who I just love. I love everything about her podcast. If you don't watch Amy Beth on um, YouTube, you definitely should. She's a bag maker, and she gets the best fabrics. Look at this fabric. And I like how it's wide. It's a good size bag. Here's her label. I don't know if you can see it. Fat Squirrel Speaks. Actually, it's just a uh, fat, fat Squirrel for the bags, but it's Fat Squirrel Speaks on YouTube. So it's living in this bag right here. So that is my project queue. Shall we talk about a new segment? I think we should. Now, I've been thinking a lot about this segment, and what sparked the idea for Pattern Lab is a conversation that has been going off and on for the past couple of years on Instagram about um, the accessibility of yarns with patterns and how um, certain yarns are just out of everybody's budget to make these patterns, and um, there was a situation that kicked this conversation off again. And I will tell you that I, except for two times, three times, have purchased a yarn that the pattern called for. The other 11,000 times, I have just substituted yarn. It's never been an issue for me to substitute yarn, um, especially at the beginning. You know, I, there's just, you don't know, and, and you're just starting out, so you use what you've got. So I'm a, I've always been very comfortable substituting yarn, but there was a conversation about, you know, whose responsibility is it to provide the information to substitute yarn to the pattern? It's a legitimate question to ask. Um, but what I thought I would do is two things. I want to really engage with my audience and I really want us to learn from each other. So what I propose is that we are going to explore a pattern with different kinds of yarn. Not me, because I cannot crochet three of the same thing. I just don't have the time. But the parameters of Pattern Lab are that 
if you are interested, you will send me what I'm calling a little mini proposal. And that little mini proposal will uh, have your name and your Instagram. Hopefully you have an Instagram or if you have a Ravelry somewhere where I can see your work and you will let me know what fiber you most crochet with or knit if you're a knitter crochet or whatever what fiber you mostly work with and I will provide a copy of a pattern and the yarn to make that pattern and I will send it to you then you will have about four weeks because I'd like to do it from podcast to podcast if possible but we're still you know I'm still working still working on the details but let's say four weeks to make the project I will also send out a shipping label so that you ship the project back to me and then I can share the project with the YouTube viewership and if you'd like to make a two to five minute video letting me know about your experience working with this particular fiber and pattern that will be great i can include it in the blogcast once i am done showing the projects on the blogcast i will send the project back to you and you get to keep it so you'll be crocheting a project that you lend to me to share with the viewers of the blogcast but in the end you'll get to keep it my goal with Pattern Lab is that we get to see finished projects with different kinds of fiber. So, for example, there'll be projects that will be with hand dyed yarn, um, acrylic yarn, or some other kind of blend. So, I really am looking forward to seeing how um, different fibers work with, with patterns. And like I said, I don't have time to crochet three different shawls um, using three different kinds of fibers, but I think that if we can work together, we can all learn and it'll be an amazing experience. The first pattern that we are going to explore for Pattern Lab is uh, a pattern by my good friend Faye of the Crochet Circle podcast, and it is her Omni Shawl. The reason I picked this pattern is because it is incredibly versatile. This pattern can be made from fingering weight all the way up to worsted weight. And you can see here she has done different samples of the shawl. And I believe it's very customizable. She actually um, will be sending me some hard copies of this pattern and we'll be contributing some yarn for this first go around of pattern. Here lab. is the second segment that I want to include in the blogcast. And one of the things that I have been exploring um, throughout the summer and even previous to that is connecting with my Salvadoran roots. I was born in El Salvador. I came to the United States when I was eight years old. I'm 48 years old, so that means I have spent 40 years of my life in the United States. But lately, I have really been getting this pull, this need to really connect with those roots. And I briefly had an exchange with Nancy Ricci of Getting Pearly With It, and she said something that was very poignant to me. And she said that I'm feeling that pull from my ancestors. My ancestors are calling. And I felt like that is exactly what I felt. I feel like exploring my origins and my roots is really important at this time. And I'm doing that through art, literature, poetry, and history. And that's one of the reasons why I've been sharing a lot of posts about El Salvador on my Instagram account. Um, I have been collecting some books that I'll be reading. I actually shared one of, them on, one of them on Instagram, which is a children's book called Magic Dog of the Magic Dogs of the Volcano. And what's beautiful about this book is, is that it's written not only in English but in Spanish. And the illustrations are just beautiful. This tells us the story of these magic cadejos, which are these magical dogs that protect 
in the story, they protect the peasants of the country. And I, um, I just fell in love with some of the illustrations. She is a volcano. You can see the smoke coming up from her head. And I have found that the volcanoes play a really important role in Salvadorian culture and history. Almost everything that I'm picking up somehow talks about a volcano or an eruption or something that's going on. And I am currently actually reading Land of Childhood by Claudia Lars. She is a very well-known Salvadorian writer. Um, I actually have this book in Spanish. And so, you know, there is, there is a level of privilege that I feel I have that I'm able to speak Spanish, read in Spanish, write in Spanish, although not that great. <laughs> But I do feel like I don't take it for granted that I can read both in English and Spanish. And um, my kids struggle with Spanish, and that's because I don't speak to them in Spanish as much as I should. Um, I actually feel much more comfortable speaking in English. I've lost that connection to Spanish because I only speak in English all day, every day. And so I'm trying to go back and I'm trying to connect, um, make those connections. And when I talk to my mom now, um, my mom and I, we always speak in, in, in English. So I'm trying to have conversations with her in Spanish. And I, I'll be honest with you, it's difficult. So I'm, I'm reading this book right now, which is basically a memoir of her life growing up. And she, her, her family house is actually within viewing distance of one of the big volcanoes. And she talks about that in here. This book was written by Manio Argueta. Even though this is a children's book, he's a very well-known Salvadorian writer. And I purchased some of um, his other works that I found in English. This is One Day, uh, one day of Life. And this one is called... Cuscatlan, where the Southern Sea Beats. So I look forward to reading both of these books. And I've purchased um, books from other authors. I found this really cute one called San Salvador. And this is a children's book as well. And what I like about this, it kind of goes through the, the big landmarks. Um, in El Salvador, I'll share this one with you. This is El Salvador del Mundo. And this is basically a huge, um, it's a huge landmark and it's in the middle of this round, I don't know how you call them in English, but I know in Europe they're, they're popular, roundabout, basically where the cars go around and everybody knows this image right here. So I, I loved, I love, uh, sharing these, um, with my kids so that they can see where, where I grew up and, you know, part, it's part of their heritage as well. And this is another big landmark, which is a cathedral. This is the main cathedral in San Salvador. And so that's sort of what Raices is going to be about. I might not always have uh, Raices in the blogcast, but I tell you I'm actively working each and every week on finding out more about um, El Salvador and my origins, and I would love to be able to share that One with you guys. One of the things I'm really excited about is participating in Hispanic Heritage Month. This will be my first year doing it. And I was contacted by uh, Mary Cigares, who is an underground crafter. I will put her name here. Marie is amazing. She is hosting Latinx Makers from September 15th through October 15th. And if you go to her Instagram, um, she has uh, all these incredible makers, some that I have never heard of, which I'm really excited about. So I highly encourage you to check them out. She's doing an amazing job sharing um, everybody's posts. I actually am going to be part of it and my posts will come towards the end of the month. I'm hoping that you guys will all pop over to Marie's uh, Instagram to check all these amazing makers out.
I am so excited to share this next thing with you. And this is a project that I have been working on for a very long time. I hinted about it on Instagram, but really I let the whole cat out of the bag. And that is that I have been working on bringing a yarn to the crochet community that is made especially for us. I um, got the idea for this last year, at the beginning of last year. And I, uh, maybe even previous to that, because it's been a couple of years since I've had the idea to do it. I heard something about Z-Twist yarns and how they help crochet from a, uh, a video that I saw. And then I did some research on it. Um, I found that really there is nobody making a hand dyed uh, Z-Twist yarn. Now, why is Z-Twist important for crocheters? So if you look at most yarns, most of the yarns that we buy, uh, hand dyed or commercial are done in what's called an S-Twist. This is a yarn baby skein of yarn. That means that the yarn is twisted in such a way that if you were to look at it closely, the twist looks like the letter S. And what happens is for us crocheters is that the motion and actually the way that crochet is, is created, we often just by the very, you know, method of crochet, we undo that twist. And a lot of times that creates, you know, splitting of the fiber and, um, basically that, that's one of the big things that it splits the fibers and, um, it just can have a different outcome than if you were knitting it because with knitting, you're not really doing that. And so as, as Z twist is a fiber that is twisted. If you look at it almost like in a Z shape. And when we crochet, we're actually tightening up that twist, giving us very beautiful stitch definition. Now, the reason you probably don't see a lot of Z twist on the market is because machines that create these yarns, they have to be reverse. Their gears reverse. Everything, the whole process has to be reversed in order to create that Z twist. There is one company here in America, I believe, no, let me say that again. There's one major company, commercial company in America that creates a Z twist yarn. And that is Lion Brand. Lion Brand has something called a ZZ twist. I purchased this last year and actually created a top that I've never shown on the podcast, but I wear all the time because I love it. I made this top using a pattern by Shannon Creates. Um, it is called a Simply Simply Seamless Crochet Tea Pattern. This is a paid pattern. Highly, highly, highly recommend this pattern. There is not another crochet garment that I have made up until this point that has fit me as well as this top. I love this top. It fits really well. It is a raglan construction. And I decided that I was going to try out the Z-Twist yarn with this pattern. The stitch definition is incredible on this top. And part of it is not only the stitch that she uses for the pattern, but also the fact that it's done in Z-Twist. Love the yarn, love the pattern, love the stitch definition. So this fur further reinforced in my mind that I wanted to move forward and find a way to bring the crochet community a yarn that will help us with our crochet projects and that will give us beautiful stitch definition no matter what the stitch. Now I believe Furls Crochet, they make the beautiful, you know, those really beautiful hooks, high end hooks. I believe they have a Z twist yarn. I don't have a sample of that to show you, but you might want to check them out. There's also a company, this is a UK based company, not a UK based, this is a European company. It's called All Centrum. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but you can see that this is also a Z twist. It's called 
I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that. But you can see that they do make a uh, natural fiber with a Z twist, and you can you can see the difference in the way that the fibers look. So there's this one, there's this one, there's the furls um, crochet, and now. I would like to introduce you to Luna Yarns, which is a luxury Z twist yarn. You can see that beautiful twist in the yarn right here. And I purposely had this yarn dyed in this beautiful purple that I'm calling Esperanza, which is Spanish word for hope, because I was going to I had it in my mind that what I wanted to do was work on the Empowered. This is called the Empowered People Bandana. This is a crochet version by the talented Laverne Benton, who is Busy Peach. This is her company. She designed this pattern for the Empowered People Project 2020. There's a whole website about this. And what this project is about is encouraging people to vote and the importance of voting and there's lots of information um there are a, there's a free tunisian crochet pattern a free crochet pattern a free knitting pattern and a free sewing pattern so that you too can make a purple bandana and i knew that i wanted my yarn my z twist yarn to be this beautiful purple so that i can make my beautiful empowered people bandana here is a close-up this is um a close-up of the stitches this one is 80 percent alpaca 20 percent merino um, it has a nice squishiness to it and what i did is as you can see laverne's pattern does not have a scalped edge scalloped edge and I did go ahead what I did is I just put a nice little scalloped edge on mine there you go just a simple little scallop edge just to add a little bit of interest to that edge and she her pattern calls for I believe DK weight yarn yeah her pattern calls for a DK weight yarn I used this skein of yarn to make my bandana and this is uh, 190 yards for 88 grams and i only had this much left after i made my bandana and i'll tell you i actually did not complete the number of rounds in the pattern because i was trying it on and i found that it was at the right length for me so with one skein of the yarn you can definitely make a bandana there are only five skeins available in this um in this blend that will be on the etsy will be available in the etsy shop as of when this episode airs so i wanted to share this with you and let you know that this is a try this these are the these are the trial skeins of yarn for um luna yarns so there's only five available I don't even have labels made, so I'm just handwriting my information, but I do have uh, a great logo that was done for me by Molly Saunder, and she is May Saunder here on Instagram. I will put her information down below. She's an amazing graphic designer. So yes, so this bandana was made with just a little bit less than one skein of Luna yarns. So I... I then I went ahead and put in an order, an initial order of 100 skeins of yarn to be dyed and with different blends. And I'll share those with you. Um, I've got, and, okay, so here's the thing. I uh, immediately knew that I wanted to contact some of my great crochet designer friends that I know. And I had a little bit of a chat with them on Zoom and um i let them pick the colors i said what colors would you guys want to design with and i 
will not disclose their names. I will just show you the colors because they will be working on some projects for uh, for Luna Yarns. What I'll tell you is that I am really, really excited about what they design and I'm really excited to put this yarn out into the world. So they don't have names yet, but I have this really beautiful yellow color and there is this really beautiful like light red color. It's a little bit darker than what you're seeing on the screen, just a little bit. And there is this amazing blue. So these colorways will be available, I'm hoping mid-October. Um, I will definitely, please follow me on Instagram so that you can see when they'll be available in the Etsy shop. They will probably be available before the patterns are done because I still have not gotten the yarn over to the designers and that's, that's my bad. Um, but I'm so excited to see what they create. These two particular colorways are a 50-50 blend of Halka Merino. Then this one right here is 100% Merino. And then um, I will have also the purple in the 50-50 blend. But initially, I'm putting up these five skeins of 80-20, which is 80% of Halka, 20 percent merino on the Etsy shop as well as this hot pink look at this isn't this beautiful this one will also go into the Etsy shop but I will only have three of these because I have a designer that will be designing with two of these so two pink and five purple is what I can offer right now on the Etsy shop I'll tell you right now this yarn, the way it feels to me, feels really good. It is not the softest yarn. It's not the same as an 80-20 blend. This is super soft. This is just, it feels good, but it's not that buttery soft. Um, this is the 50-50 Alpaca Merino. But I, I love, I just love the way that they look. I love the colors. And I'm really excited to get this um to you. So yeah, uh, this is my big Luna Yarn announcement and I am so looking forward to getting this out to you guys. I already have ideas for the next shipment. I'm starting small. Um, I'm, this is a luxury yarn. It is not the most inexpensive yarn you're going to see on the market and I get that, but due to the nature of the process, um, and due to the way that this yarn is created, the price point is going to reflect that. So I, I said, it's not going to be the most economical yarn, but it's definitely going to be an experience. Um, I will be putting some kits together with like a pin and yarn and a pattern. And I'm, I'm really, really, I'm really excited about the future for Luna Yarns. And I hope that you will join me on this journey because I really, like I said, my goal has always been to elevate crochet for the beautiful craft that it is. On a quick note, I will be at the Knitting Tree in LA from October 10th through the 11th to celebrate Rhinebeck West. This is an event that I participated in last year that was amazing and so much fun. And it will actually be the first time, the first time vending at an actual place since all this shutdown happened. There are some strict, strict protocols in place if you are going to come to the shop, you will need to call, and make an appointment. There's going to be limited people that will be allowed to shop in the store, but there will be a food truck. There will be um, vendors that set up on the outside, and there also will be an online component to Rhinebeck West. So there's also an Instagram account for that. If you want to follow more information and get more information, you can get it at on the Rhinebeck West Instagram account. I'm really, really excited to be part of this. I have some new pins that I'll be debuting and some other um, 
fun things as well. The same week that I do Rhinebeck West, I will also be hosting a panel um, through Vogue Knitting Live. If you don't know about Vogue Knitting Live, it's not just about knitting. Um, every month now, they've been holding classes, a marketplace, and also they uh, allow you to have these little extra lectures that you can participate in. If you uh, join for less than $5, I believe you get access to the marketplace and some of these show extras. I'm really excited that I'm putting together a panel um, uh, to interview some amazing designers. The panel is going to be called Crochet in the UK. So if you have a chance to purchase a ticket, like I said, for less than $5, you'll be able to access my panel along with other panels, not the classes because that's a separate price, but they um, are wonderful about bringing these uh, panels that you can access. Um, last month, I participated on a panel with Christy Glass and three other um, makers, and it was to celebrate the life of John Giswold. He unexpectedly passed away, and he actually had reached out to me to be part of this panel, and Christy Glass actually stepped in uh, in his memory and in honor of him and went ahead with the panel and it was a lot of fun to talk about you know what I'm crafting how I got started in crochet and they were there's a variety of panels panel discussions that you can join just with that you know small fee of less than five dollars so check that out I will put a link to Vogue Knitting Live so you can get lastly I want to share that I have started a Patreon. I know many of my fellow podcasters have Patreons and I have been resisting doing it. I have said as long as you, you know, I see support in the Etsy shop that, you know, that helps me to support the channel. On my last episode, I got some good feedback um, regarding uh, setting up an account like a coffee account um, for the channel. Obviously, there's no pressure to join my Patreon. I have three tiers, a three, a five, and ten dollar tier. Um, if you want to check it out, there's no pressure. I will keep putting on my YouTube videos here uh, for you to enjoy. I do have some extra content that I'm, I will make available and a couple extra perks that are, are available for those who join Patreon. Um, one of them is uh, some... Um, Invitations to Zoom meetings. That's not something that I've done previously, but I'm looking forward to. You know, just like a, you know, a stitch and share type of situation. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm i excited. Like I said, there's no pressure for anybody to join Patreon. But uh, if you do, I, I am highly appreciative of it. Um, I will be doing a lot more uh, shipping of things with, you know, Pattern Lab. Um, I've purchased some new software for editing. I just think it would be amazing to be able to fund some of the things for the podcast uh, through patron donations. But like I said, it's it's not a uh, it's not a requirement. I'm not, you know, I'll still be putting out amazing content out here. I work hard to put these videos out and to bring you the content that I do. I am really proud of the blogcast and the videos that I have put out. I feel like um, they are also a part of my creative outlet. I enjoy editing. I enjoy putting, bringing together the content for you. Um, I really enjoy being able to share knowledge and experiences with you. And I will keep doing that. It is, like I said, it's just another creative outlet for me. And uh, if you do decide to join Patreon, please know that I'm really, really appreciative. Are you ready for some Pattern Palooza? I'm so excited to share Pattern Palooza with you guys. I have so many good patterns um, to share with you. And it's this one is a pretty eclectic one. There's a, a nice mix of shawls and uh, sweater and um, things that have been gifted to me that I want to I want to share with you, which I think are amazing. And I'm going to start out with hats because I'm wanting to crochet a hat. Really, really want to crochet a hat for the season or two or three I don't know I just really 
I was excited to see these patterns and I wanted to share them with you. The first one is called Whirlwind Beanie and this one is by Rachie Nguyen Designs. If you don't know Rachie Nguyen, you should because she is an amazing crochet designer. This is a paid pattern. But look at the top of that hat. Isn't that amazing? It's really amazing. <laughs> so yeah, I want to be able to make that. And then I bought the Flower Child Beanie. This is a 20 ellipses pattern. This is also a paid pattern. This pattern says you can make a hat for the entire family. So it is size so that you can make a hat for everyone in the family. The Flower Child Beanie by Tony Lipsy. She is TLY Crafts. The next pattern is by Marie Cigaris, Underground Crafter. I was just talking about her. And it's called the Froyo Triangle Scarf. And of course, I had to buy it because, you know, free to call shoes. Come on. This is a paid pattern. I believe this is a, a one skein pattern which I think is awesome. Good. Look at the pattern right there. Next, one of my favorite designers. She makes beautiful, beautiful things. But I never know if I'm saying her name right or wrong. It's Amari Renji. And this is her Irsia Shawl. Isn't she beautiful? Oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. And look at the shawl. That shawl is to die for. I love her giant shawls. I made her hexit shawl and I love it. This is also a paid pattern, but look at how beautiful that is. I love it. Another designer that I like and I have bought a lot of patterns, but I've yet to make one, is um, Jane Clivesett. Uh She is Joy of Motion. I've shown her patterns before. This is the Fall Favorite Classic Raglan Cardigan. This is a paid pattern. Look at how beautiful that looks. I really like Raglan Construction. I do well with it. The Boobitch does well with Raglan Construction. <clears throat> I like that it has no, it has no, uh, no buttons. So I'm not going to worry about buttons, but look at that. Is that pretty? Again, that is called Fall Favorite Classic Raglan. Then I was gifted, as I said to you, the Ethical Collection by Cecilia Lozada. There are four patterns in this collection. I've shown you the, um, the T, but she also has a vest. It's called a Brave Hard Vest. Here are all the patterns. There's a, there's a shawl, there's two shawls. There's two shawls, there's this beautiful shawl here. And then there's a vest right here. And then there's another shawl right there. And then this is the tee that I'm working on. The next pattern I'm going to show you, I just melted when I saw it. It's so cute. It was sent to me by Penny, who is Rocket Mountain Penny. Rocky Mountain Penny. And it's a Pony McTate pattern. Do you guys remember I did her skull sweater? And, and she's doing these famous rabbit patterns she's got a star trek one and then she has this one look at this one you guys frida Kahlo as a rabbit oh i have got to make this i've got you guys know i'm not an amigurumi person but i've got to make this this is a paid pattern look at her she's so cute and then um she also comes with accessories she comes with as you guys know, towards the end of Frida's life, she was in a wheelchair, and my rabbit has a wheelchair as well, and there's instructions on how to make it. 
So I thought that was really wonderful. And I want to thank you, Penny, for thinking of me. Um, here is the crocheted wheelchair. And then she also did Mr. Spock. I just printed this picture to show you. This is the Spock rabbit. So I just, I mean, even just looking at this picture, you guys, puts a smile on my face. Look at her. Oh my God, she's so cute. Then Lori, who is um, Lori Lulu on, she has the Lori Lulu podcast, gifted the persuasion shawl to me to give to someone. For the summer of romance cow so I will also pick someone to um, get a copy of this beautiful shawl uh, on the next for the next episode so thank you so much Lori I really appreciate you sending me this copy and if you don't know Lori has designed a lot of shawls so you definitely should check her out then I do have um, three free patterns I want to share with you. One, which looks amazing. It's called the Alaskan Waffle Shawl. This is a free uh, Ravelry download. And I specifically wanted to share with you guys Ravelry downloads because I know a lot of free patterns are tied to blogs. Um, and, and sometimes it's difficult to follow the pattern, but these next patterns, you can download them instantly from Ravelry. The next one is called Terraform and Crochet. I have shared this pattern before, and I want to share it again because I think it's one of the most fantastic patterns I've ever crocheted. And it is basically like a corner to, work corner to corner. I'll show you. I have, I've actually done three of these. I don't have the third one. But... This is Terraform and Crochet. It was a one skein uh, Malabrigo. I believe it was with Malabrigo. Malabrigo yarn that I bought years ago. Maybe like four years ago. It was one skein. And it turned out this way. I never blocked this. I'm sure if I block it, I'd get more length out of it. But I love it as a, a short scarf. And then I've shown this one as well. This was, um, this was part of a kit. So my cousin gave me, um, Melanie Berg's on the spice market knitting kit. And at that time I had nothing to do with knitting. So what I did is I took terraform and crochet and the minis and the skein, the different skeins. And I created my version of on the spice market. This, this is why I love this pattern so much because it is such a versatile pattern. As you can see, it just becomes like one giant asymmetrical triangle. I love, love the shawl. This is one of my, actually, you know, I keep saying like everything is one of my favorites. I just love what I do. I love crochet. I love everything that I've taken the time to crochet are things that are special to me and I love them so yeah this is this is an amazing pattern so I'm sharing that with you it is a free Ravelry download Terraform and Crochet is a pattern that was created by Cherry McEwen I know if you can see her name there as always I will have a bundle for all of the patterns that I've talked talked about in this episode in my Ravelry uh, Crochet Luna group and I know and I am I apologize in advance for those of you having accessibility issues I um, I just don't know where else to put these patterns and listing them individually just takes so long if you are not accessing Ravelry and you like a particular pattern and you want the information just let me know send me a message and I will be happy to share the pattern name with you. Um, the next pattern is called Felicita. It is by Petra Skorjunk. I don't know how to pronounce this name. I will show you this amazing pattern. This is called Felicita. 
which by the way is my kids elementary school which I thought was kind of kind of funny um, this is a free pattern it is a very comprehensive pattern it is 21 pages and she has page after page of of diagrams and it's it's really uh, I mean I don't for a free pattern this this is an amazing pattern so this is Felicita and that is it I have a lot of acquisitions you guys I have bought a lot of stuff um, I kind of, I, I mean, there's stuff that I want to share with you, but I think it's better to share it when it makes sense. There is one thing I will share with you because it is fantastic. I just got my, the child bag from uh, Utterly Adorable Knits. This is her card. It is adorable. She does amazing, I don't know if you can see it because of the lighting. She does amazing bags, but she had our first, she put these out and then I was like, oh my gosh, I missed the update because um, they sold out so fast. And then when she did the second one, I was so happy to be able to get it. But look at that. <gasps> He's so cute. I love it. And then I will show you very quickly a couple of not more than a couple because I have bought more than a couple, but I'll show you some of the yarn acquisitions. And um, I could not make up my mind when I was doing some of our romance. I could not make up my mind uh, about what yarns to use. And so Jessie, you know, she dyed those two Alabama and Clarence colors. But I also couldn't make up my mind what couples I wanted to use. And so it was Clarence in Alabama, and then it was like Romeo and Juliet. So I contacted Tara of Mitchell's Creation. If you don't know Tara, stop what you're doing and go check out her shop because I have been following Tara for many, many years, and she has some of the most beautiful yarn you'll ever see. And so I had her dye. So I'm, very, I'm very lucky that she was able to custom dye this for me. Um, two skeins of DK weight yarn to represent Romeo and Juliet. And I, I gave her a complete carte blanche to interpret that theme. And she came up with this. Could you just not see the tumultuous love affair that ends in tragedy in these yarns? And I, when I got them, I said to her, you know what? No, when she showed me the picture, I said, you know, the first word that comes to my mind is passion. So she named these passion and these are one of a kind yarns that she dyed for me. And this, I definitely know that I want to make a shawl with, um, and it's going to be a knitted shawl. So I can't, I can't wait to get this on some needles. And then yarn baby, you guys know, I love me, my yarn baby. She put this colorway out and it's called puppeteer so I bought this because I mean look at it it's just absolutely gorgeous Ugh, Shannon is amazing she is an amazing dyer so I got these I was watching the grocery girls and they totally enabled me and I immediately went to the Hue local website and bought these these are, this is called, this colorway is called Troublemaker. Isn't that beautiful? So yes, I have bought some yarn. Um, I, I will be working on destashing some yarn. And I have also bought some notions and other trinkets. I bought uh, uh, one of these beautiful ruler bracelets from Chelsea Yarns. And can I tell you how bummed out I am to know that I'll never get to go to the Chelsea Yarns yarn shop because Christina um, moved her shop from uh, where it was to her house and she's do, you know running the yarn shop basically the dye shop from her 
from her house. And so I'm kind of bummed out that I never made it out there. But she did give me this beautiful pen that you cannot see, but it's glittery. And it says Chelsea Yarns. I've met Christina a couple of times, and she's a wonderful person. Um, her mom is amazing, Susan. I just love Susan. And, yeah, I was kind of bummed out. I never be able to go there. But I, I got a bracelet, and I got a pin. Um, I also bought this Neighborhood Fiber Co. pin called, it says Black Lives Matter. And there's this little black sheep. I like that. I bought a lot of pins, you guys. I'm feeling my pin game. Um, I, you know, again, I'm a big fan of the grocery girls. I love how supportive they are of everyone. And look at this cool card. I got that card when I ordered Muffy. Can you guys see Muffy? There's Muffy. And then I got the Muffy pen as well. Isn't she cute? I love it. And they were nice enough. They included a pair of scissors in my, oh, these really sharp, beautiful scissors. And my little purchase. I also bought a, I found this, this company on Instagram. It's called Inclusive Randomness. Um, and she's got some of the best pens. You know, I'm a pen designer. She's got amazing pens. And so, basically, yeah. Wash your hands. Don't be a racist. Wash your hands and don't be a racist. It's very simple. Right? The company name is called Inclusive Randomness. And I couldn't agree more with her tagline. This is what came when I got the button. You can't buy happiness, but you can buy buttons, which is kind of the same thing. <laughs> and the back of her card, how great is that? You can do a little to-do list. So this is Inclusive Randomness. It is a Black-owned shop. Definitely support them. Um, yeah, so, you know, I just, I felt like, I felt like I really wanted to support a lot of these makers through this time because, like I said, many of us, um, who were counting on going to shows and, and counting on having this income from shows, basically that just stopped. None of that happened this year. And we're not done with COVID-19. We are not done with restrictions and things like that. So it's, it's not something where there's a finish line and all of a sudden everything will go back to where it was at the beginning of the year. Um, things have profoundly changed for many of us. Uh, businesses have profoundly changed. And so I have been actively trying to support people, um, when I can, uh, because I don't want these makers to go away. I want them to thrive and I want them to move forward and I want them to keep making the beautiful, incredible things that they make for our, our community. And so it's been really important for me, even if it's just a little bit to be able to support different, different makers. And with that, I've come to the end of this uh, video and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the support that you have always shown me, the interactions that you've had with me or that I've had with you on Instagram and here on YouTube. I, I feel it's been really, really important and a lifeline for me to know that I am a part of a strong community that is full of kindness and acceptance. Um, and so I, I thank you, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Crochet on. Bye. I just wanted to pop back in here because 
I had meant with the shout out at the beginning of the video and then I started going in and I completely forgot. Um, I just wanted to say a big hello to my niece Sonia and my nephew Angus. I hope you guys are all well. Um, I think about you guys all the time and um, I'm happy to hear that you and the family are doing well. And so, um, yeah, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you one of these days. So take care. Bye.